Hello and welcome, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2K Dev. Welcome to another Game Maker tutorial. Today we're going to be doing a Fog of War system and it's extremely easy. This is like the easiest Fog of War system that you could possibly ever make and I bet we could do this in under 10 minutes. So, I, I mean, I've seen some of these Fog of War systems on the forums and they are huge, ridiculous amounts of scripts and all sorts of crazy stuff. So, I'm going to show you the easiest, simplest way to make a Fog of War system. First of all, you're going to need a sprite um, called whatever you like. I'm going to use one called uh, Sprite Light, SPR Light. And all it is, is it's a transparent image with some light in the center of it. That's just a white, a white brush. And I've just gone bang with the, with the brush in the middle there and used a, used a bigger size and done something like that. And you know, there's a, there's a light basically that's how it's done. Um, center that. And once you're done with that, uh, go create an object. I'm just going to create a group called a uh, fog of war. And inside of that, I'm going to create an object. I'm going to call this um, obj underscore um, world underscore fog. There we go. And set the depth to 9,999. Now you want your depth to be above all of your user, sorry, above all of your player elements and below all of your user interface elements. So I'm just going to use 9999. Uh, go ahead and add a create event to that and drag a code segment in. Now I'll just stretch this out because I've got the font size zoomed up a little bit. So the first thing you want is a variable called resolution. So I'm just gonna say res equals 10. That's gonna be resolution. Then you want a surface. So I'm gonna say s fog equals surface underscore create. And it's gonna be the height and it's gonna be the dimensions of the room divided by the resolution. So uh, room width divided by res and then room height divided by res. There we go. Uh, once you've created, once you've got your surface created, I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna say surface set target and it's going to be s fog for our surface there we go and then inside of that we want to clear the surface to black so draw clear c black there we go so now the surface is covered in black blackness that's it <laughs> um and then finally all you need to do is say surface reset target and basically now all of your draw commands will stop uh, affecting the surface. So what these surface uh, set and reset do, when you say surface set target, you're saying from now on, I want all of the draw commands to draw the, whatever I'm trying to draw onto this surface and not onto the game surface. When you say surface reset target, all of your draw commands go back to functioning like normal. Okay. So now that we've got that, we can close out of this and jump into our main room. And I'm just going to place one of them, uh, the object world fog onto our map. Now I'm using the Pokemon uh, movement example that I created in the last episode, um, but I'm only doing that so that I can show you guys how the uh, system works. We've got a slight bug here, and that is that I forgot. We need to add a draw event to our world fog. Uh, and then inside of our draw event, we need to say draw surface ext. This is going to be an extra method. And the reason we're doing that is because we need to stretch it out by the by the amount that we divided it by. So we divided it by 10, we need to stretch it out by 10. So I'm going to say uh, s fog is the one that we want to draw, draw it at position zero, zero, so top left corner. And we want it to be scaled by whatever rest is. So if rest was if rest was 10, we divided the size of the room by 10, we need to stretch it out by multiplying it by 10. So uh, X and Y scale are going to be the same. So rest, um, rotation zero, color zero, alpha one. So we want it to be fully visible with alpha one. Um, and if we run the game now, what you'll see is our world is now black. We're just in a world of blackness. Uh, the other thing I'll do quickly, I've got interpolation turned on, so I need to turn that off. Um, there we go. Uh, so if you want to do that, global game settings, windows, interpolate between colors, turn that off. It makes your pixel art look better. If you have that turned on, it will stretch your pixel art out. Uh, the final thing we need to do is we've got the light, we've got the fog. We need to make the player subtract away from that fog when, the, when they move. So in our draw event for the player, we are going to go and drag a code segment. And the first thing we're going to do is just say draw self. So we draw our self to the screen. Then we need to set the target of the surface. So surface set target, and we're going to use object world fog dot s fog because that was the surface that we created for our fog. And then finally, surface reset target. There we go. So now what we've got is in between here, our draw commands will now only affect this surface. Uh, inside of here, now we can say something like draw set blend mode, and we're going to say bm src color. And that's going to give us the color, uh, the source color blend mode. And then finally, draw set blend. It would help if I can type today. 
draw set blend mode BM normal. This returns it back to being normal drawing. And then inside of that, we're going to say draw sprite X and we're gonna draw the light onto the screen. So we're gonna say SPR light. We're gonna draw it at uh, sub image zero, of course. Now the X and Y position are going to be the player's X divided by object world fog dot rest because remember we've shrunk it down by a factor of 10 so we need to divide the player's position by a factor of 10 so that the light will line up with our player uh, and then finally y position is divided by object world fog dot rest uh, and then for the x and y scale they are going to be uh one I'm just going to use one for this uh one for the actually no sorry i need to use a smaller number because i've got a bigger a bigger sprite i'm going to use 0 0.3 0 0.3 uh, rotation is going to be zero color is going to be zero and alpha will be one now if we run our game and everything went well you should see something like this and now what you have is essentially a very basic fog of war system as the player moves around we're drawing that white pixel onto the screen the white pixel itself is transparent, so what's happening is those pixels are fading away into, into clarity. Now, it might look a bit blocky, and this is useful for a very um, pixelated game, like a pixel art game or something, you know, uh, a role-playing game or a top-down strategy. But if you want it to be a little bit smoother, what you can do, i just uh, close that off. What you can do is go into your world fog and lower the resolution because this is the um, this is the factor that we are dividing the surface by. So we're making the surface smaller with a higher resolution. I know it's counterintuitive, but um, that's just a name I chose. So if you wanted to, you could lower this to say three. In doing that, though, the size of the image that you're drawing to the screen gets smaller as well. So what you need to do is uh, multiply or increase the scale of the image. So if you come back into your player, I'm using 0.3, move that back up to one. Or you could adjust the image size. It's totally up to you how you accomplish this, but you basically need to compensate. As you make the surface bigger, you need a bigger um, a bigger image to deal with it. And that's a much smoother version of the um, Fog of War system. Now, going a step further than that, if you weren't doing a pixel art game and you were happy to leave the interpolate between colors on, go ahead and turn that on and what you'll get is an even smoother version because now that surface is going to be interpolated onto the map that every pixel will be um, blended with the pixel next to it. So what you'll end up with is a very smooth fog of war system. So I hope this video has helped you. Uh, please don't forget to like this video. I hope you guys know that every single like really helps. It really actually helps me make more of these um, tutorial videos. So if you don't mind, go ahead and please give it a like. Also follow and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you haven't seen already, I'm also playing a lot of games at the moment on my YouTube channel. So uh, check those out and give those some likes as well because uh, they're, they're pretty funny and you probably enjoy them. If you like making games, you probably like watching games. So um, I'm doing a lot of Let's Plays recently and you can check those out on my channel as well. So I hope this has helped. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, uh, favorite, all that sort of stuff. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.